Okay, then we're gonna call this meeting to order. This is the, oh, excuse me. Oh, bless you. you. This is the Wednesday, uh, December 1st meeting of the Springfield Planning Board. Bill, if you would do roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Cunningham. Here. Mr. Minio. Here. Mr. Daniele. Here. Ms. Morin. Here. D. Filippo. Here. Mr. Florian. Here. Ms. McQuaid. Here. And Ms. Choi. Here. Oh, so we have a quorum. Okay. There are no minutes to approve. So. No. So just quickly again, I just want to run through the uh, the process here for, for those who are new to the meeting. Um, and those who may be watching, uh, due to the Zoom requirements, meetings before the planning board are a two-part process. Um, new items will be heard tonight. The petitioners will be allowed to present. The planning board will then be able to ask questions. Um, but the items on tonight, the new items on tonight's meeting will be continued. Um, the planning board hearing will then be uh, broadcast on Focus Springfield tomorrow. Um, the general public can then view the meeting and if they wish to do so, they can provide comments and any comments received at the following meeting will be heard, read into the record and then uh, the, that item will be voted on tonight. So we have, uh, I think, three continued items and then four continued items and then one new item tonight. So um, under continued hearings, um, a liquor license for the Farmers Series Poor Permit at 34 Front Street. Um, just so the board's aware, and I think I sent these out to you, I, I did receive an approval letter from the Indian Orchard Citizens Council. I also received a second email from the president, Zeta Govin, um, again, just reiterating her support of the poor license for rustic brewing. She's indicated they're a good corporate uh, neighbor and uh, uh, they're you know, responsible uh, business owners. Uh, as far as in their, their, they fully support the, the request. All right. Are there any questions from the board members? Jared, there's a hand up. Is that you? I my. Son might have hit something if it was me. Okay, that's that's all right. Does he have something he wants to say? <laughs> if there are no other questions from the the board members, I will uh, entertain a motion to close this hearing. We'll make a close this hearing. Second. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, voting, um, you know, voting yeah. to close the hearing, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Warren? Yes. Mr. Filippo? Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Ms. McQuaid? Yes. And Ms. Joy? Yes. Hearing's closed. Okay. Someone like I'll, make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve with the following conditions. The hours of operation shall be as stated by the petitioner and any and all signage shall be properly permitted. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Jennifer. Phil, if you would do roll call. Voting in, uh, in favor, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Mr. Steve Filippo? Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Ms. McQuaid? Yes. Ms. Choi? Yes. Motion. All vote. right. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We appreciate your uh, energies and efforts and help through this. We uh, appreciate it. Thanks. You're welcome. Looking forward to next summer. Yes, for sure. <laughs> very much. Say bye bye, Lolo. Wait, bye bye. Say thank you. Miss, I'm going to put back this up, you know, for the video.
Okay, under the uh, the next continued item, liquor license, a new beer and wine liquor license for 320-324 Wilbraham Road. Um, again, just so the, the board is aware, I did receive an, uh, a letter, which I think, again, I sent out to you uh, from the Upper Hill Residence Council, President Adrian Osborne. Um, the letter just indicates their... Um, their uh, that they fully support the proposed request. Um, I also received a, a letter from the uh, uh, the Celestial Praise Church of God, which is located at uh, three twenty one Wilbraham Road, which indicate that that the petitioner and and the and the uh, the church across the street have come to an agreement to use to use some of their parking for for this proposed use. So. Um, those are those are what they uh, um, those are the only letters I've received. Also, just just for the board's um, information, I did drive by the site the other day, and and there was a new uh, enclosure for the dumpster um, installed. Um, the dumpster hadn't put in there yet, but but there is a new a new fencing, so it, they are moving forward with that particular issue. Bill, has it been moved away from the neighbor's property? Yeah, and will it be moved? Well, it's further, the, the enclosure is further away than where it is now. Yeah. Okay. Have you had an opportunity to talk to that neighbor? Mr. Weiderburn? Oh, yes, this is Colonel Forbes. I'm the petitioner. Oh, sorry. Petitioner. Yes, and I did speak to the neighbor. And um, actually, the, um, the dumpster wasn't next to that neighbor fence who wrote the letter. He was like two, two doors down, but um, I think I don't know if they had a conversation, you know, between themselves. But yes, I um, made arrangements to move the dumpster from next to her property and move it closer to um on on my side and put a enclosure around it. Okay. And I, I also um, repositioned the lights that they said was too bright. So I re I also um, repositioned that so it's not as bright on their side as it was before. Okay, terrific. Good. Good to hear. And, and the dumpster should be placed in that area on Friday when is my regular um pickup date. So they empty it and then they put it in the enclosure that I just built. Okay. Do any of the uh, board members have any other questions? That was, those were the ones for me too. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, this is Mark Waterburn. I, I have a little diagram, if you got, if you will, I can share my screen to show you what the layout is as far as where the dumpster would be, as, a, as well as the um, parking accommodation that, that, uh, that arrangement has been made to have that. Okay. You should be able to still okay. Yep. So um, this is part of the business plan. Um, the neighborhood council asked us to do an addem addem addendum, which we did. So this this diagram here is showing the layout of the building itself. Mm -hmm. so the dumpster, if you follow my cursor, was over here or is over here at this point. As Mr. Forbes said, it'll be placed in this enclosure that's that was made um, Friday. So it's you know a lot for, uh, further further okay. away. Correct. And the parking. This is Celestial Praise here. This red hue area, and this is a uh, Golden. I mean, um, talk of the town right here to give you all a picture of. Uh, of the parking as well as the dumpster situation. Okay, thank you. Sure. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, I will um, accept a motion to close the hearing. I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Thank you, Jennifer. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you. 
Uh, voting to close the hearing, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Ms. Filippo. Yes. Ms. Florian? Yes. Ms. Quaid? Yes. And Ms. Joy? Yes. Hearing's closed. Okay. I accept a motion on this petition. I'd like I to move. Uh, go ahead, Rosemary. Oh, no, you can. That's fine. I'd like I to make a, <laughs> yeah, a motion to approve the following conditions. One, the hours of operation shall be as stated on the application. Two, there, will be, there shall be no banners, streamers, or other promotional material located on the exterior of the building, with the exception of grand opening. Three, the dumpster shall be relocated or enclosed. That's it. Thank you. Uh, voting to approve, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Ms. Filippo. Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Ms. Quaid? Yes. And Ms. Joy? Yes. Motion's approved. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. You as well. Yep. Thank you. Um, uh, under the, the next continued hearing, it, it's a zone change again for 797 Berkshire Avenue. I, I was in contact again with the petitioner. He has indicated to me that he's still continuing to work with his engineer. I guess his engineer had COVID, so that's kind of slow his ability to um, get his plans done. So um, at this point, he is still not ready to go. I, you know, I, so he is asking that this be continued again. So. I could just get a motion to continue this to the December 15th hearing. I'm not sure he's going to be ready for that either, but. I'll make a motion, motion to continue the hearing. Okay, second. So voting to continue, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Mr. Filippo? Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Ms. McLean? Yes. And Ms. Choi? Yes. Uh, okay, so this one will be continued until the December 15th hearing. Under the next continued item, it's the subdivision plan for Whispering Brook Estates. Um, as the board knows, I was not able to get an analysis out. However, uh, the engineer, I think Rob Lebeck is here, to, would like to present the plans. You know, I think we there were some outstanding issues, but uh, you know, I have spoken to DBW a number of times. They are pretty happy with what's been submitted. There's still some details to be hashed out, but um, I did want to kind of move forward with at least a presentation of the plan, um, and then we can continue this until the 15th, and hopefully at that point, um, we'll have kind of all the details hashed out. So, okay, Mr. Levesque, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, thanks, Mr. Dromey. Rob Levesque from R. Levesque Associates here this evening representing Baldwin Street LLC. Um, Frank Fitzgerald and Charlie Richards are the members of Baldwin Street LLC and they're the project proponents. We're proposing um, just off of Allen Street to construct a 17 lot subdivision. Um, I believe you may be familiar with an ANR plan that was submitted not too long ago. Um, that created a few lots. There was lot F, which contained an existing single family home um, that has since been sold. Um, and then a lot G, just to, I'll call that to the east of that, um, where there there's a, a single family home. And I believe that may be under construction as we speak. Um, so just to the west of that and off of Allen Street, there's a proposed curb cut um, that would, uh, service these 17 lots. Um, this is uh, what I'll call directly west of Allendale Drive, the, uh, the subject or circle, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, there is a residential neighborhood to the, uh, to the east. Um, to the north, uh, there's another wooded parcel. And then to the west, there are a number of commercially zoned properties that, that are also located um, where the shopping plazas are. Um, so that said, um, if it, if it pleases the, the chair and the board, I can show you the plans real quick, and then I'd be happy to answer any questions. And as Mr. Jeremy has mentioned, 
Um, there's, you know, some, some buffing out to be done, but I think we're, we're, we're fairly close with DPW and not, um, not being presumptuous, but I think we're, we're getting close. Um, so okay, I'll, I'll show you the plans quick and then and hopefully uh, keep it brief. Might take me just a second. I apologize. One more second, and then you for your patience. <clears throat> Um, are you looking at the plans or are you looking at an area? We're looking at a very small plan. The plan. Uh, does it say Whispering Brook Estates? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so with any luck right oh, now, that's so good. is that better? Yes. Oh, great. Um, so you're looking at sheet P1 from the subdivision set. So just to orient you again, Allen Street, uh, this is to the south. So the plan is oriented with north generally to the right, just so we're getting our direction set. Um, Allen Street here to the south, the proposed subdivision right of way for Whispering Brook Drive, which is the proposed name. Um, the 17 lots basically in a counterclockwise fashion running around the cul-de-sac back to lot 17. So lot one here, which is actually this large lot here, uh, includes some um, easements and some you know, sewer easements and some other drainage easements, um, and then continues around. There are a series of wetland resource areas on the parcel that have already been delineated. Um, and I believe determined through a, I think it was a request, and I, th I think it was a determination of applicability. It may have been an ANRAD, which is an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. But regardless, um, the wetland boundaries have been set. Um, there, so there's this wetland system that runs through the property, continues off site to the west to the adjacent uh, plaza. Um, the topography on site is generally sloping to the west um, towards the wetland areas. Um, and I mentioned that there's this existing sewer line that runs through the property and the easement associated therewith that continues on through the parcel um, owned by the, the plaza owners. Again, the properties to the west, but these are the names of the folks that live off of Ellendale Circle. Uh, if there's any questions specifically related to a bar. Skipping forward a few sheets. Um, this sheet pretty, pretty well illustrates the uh, design intent. So the proposed subdivision road, we're showing the existing and proposed contours on this street. You'll see that this rectangle right here is a proposed box culvert to cross the stream and also to span the, um, the sewer line that exists. We have a series of drainage structures in the street based on the subdivision standards that run through stormwater conveyance systems off to two different basins. Um, we'll start at the uh, left or the south side, which is infiltration basin one. Um, and then we also have an infiltration basin two based on the existing and proposed breaks in topography and how the lay of the land worked out for us. Um, there is uh, notably a, a cut um, that will be achieved to accommodate these houses. We've done a, a number of test pits out on the site, um, but I think the good news for the neighbors off of Ellendale is that there will be approximately a 15-foot grade change from the uh, adjacent property line uh, down to where the home sites will be. So they'll essentially be set down a slope. Um, they will be above the grade of the wetlands and above the, you know, as I mentioned, the grade drops really significantly um, in rolling topography running to the west. So we're taking care of a lot of that cut and taking the opportunity to um, create what we'll call a natural, um, uh, a man, it's not natural, I guess we'll call it a man-made um, screen, earthen screen. Um, so the folks on Ellendale, um, and at the back of their properties, they actually rise up. So they did something similar when that was developed. Uh, but they do rise up, I'm going to say at least 10 feet or so, 
Um, I have an elevation here of 244. We're up to 255. And then we drop down to an elevation of about 243 where the lots are. Lots will generally be flat, graded at a 2% positive grade, approximately away from the houses, uh, picked up as required in swales and also by the street drainage. And then run, um, we run all of our design um, through um, pre development, um, a pre and post development um, program called HydroCAD. Um, we worked out that and provided that stormwater report not only to the DPW department, but also to conservation. And we have also been in uh, contact quite a bit with sprinkler water and sewer as it relates to the sewer line that runs through the property. Um, and we would continue to communicate with them uh, for their details uh, related to the improvements um, associated with our box culvert over the stream, which also impacts um, and requires a replacement to some of the structures that exist in that area. Um, the building footprints are shown with top of wall elevation, which would be the top of the foundation wall. Um, those are approximate, but it gives you an idea of how the grading will work. Um, and that's, that's basically the proposed subdivision um, in summary. And I would be happy through the chair um, to answer any questions you may have, but we do understand that there's a little bit work left to be done uh, with the departments. Um, so we're not looking for any approvals, obviously, this evening. We just uh, wanted to bring you up to speed and see if you had any questions at this point. Thank you. Gloria, Thank you. Gloria just quickly, I just just for the information of, of people that may be watching the meeting, I, you know, I like to stress this when we when we deal with subdivisions. Um, they're they're kind of a strange animal um, for for while there's public um, hearings for the subdivision. You know, the under the subdivision control laws, the planning board is really kind of limited on how they review a subdivision. So basically, although um, you know, as, as we've dealt with over the years, there there are a number of times where neighbors are not thrilled that they're losing their woods and they're losing um, their open space behind them. If if the subdivision meets the underlying subdivision regulations, the planning board does not have the ability to deny a subdivision. This is this is a little more uh, intricate than most subdivisions because you do have a number of wetland issues here um, that needed to, to be reviewed. Um, that, that is requiring a full hearing from the Conservation Commission because um, they are actually crossing wetlands and then um, some of the other kind of details are the, are the drainage basins that are being proposed. One of the concerns I had, um, which kind of limited me in, in, in doing a full review was you know, at the end of the day, my concern was who who's going to ultimately maintain these um, because they are rather large systems. And, um, you know, uh, it, it's my understanding after having a number of conversations with the Department of Public Works, there is details being uh, drawn up to, to, to ultimately the city will control these or maintain these um, once all the houses have been constructed and built. Um, so that does, you know, it, it does kind of help me at least alleviate who, you know, if these systems do fail in the future, if there was no one responsible for maintaining them, I think everyone just kind of looks at each other. So, so again, those are some of the details that I'm still kind of waiting on um, with, uh, with regards to DPW. I had a conversation with the con uh, my staff at the Conservation Commission. Um, basically, one of the, one of the, big kind of holding points of theirs is there's a permit required, I believe by the state, Rob, that, that the developer is still waiting for. Um, but ultimately uh, the, the, the staff for the conservation indicated that he does not believe that this will be a project that won't be approved, but they, they, they can't approve it until they get that okay as well. So, um, uh, so other than that, you know, we're still, I think we'll still work. There are some details. The developer has requested some waivers, specifically one being the sidewalks. Um, but I, you know, I think we can get into detail on that at the next meeting, um, rather than go into those tonight. Because, because again, I, I, you guys are limited in the information that we, you were provided. So I, I, I would prefer to do a full review for you guys, um, and then you can you can see some of the details. Okay. Do any of the board members have questions? I just had a quick question. Um, 
I was wondering, I'm sure you met with the Outer Belt Civic Association. I was just wondering what type of concerns that they had over a project of this size. Thank you, sir. Um, I did not meet directly with them, but I know uh, Frank Fitzgerald had met with them, yeah. I believe at least on two occasions. Um, so I don't know the specifics other than, you know, the typical back, you know, backyard concerns. You know, obviously they want to make sure that um, as much of a buffer could be maintained. Um, I do think there was some question with, uh, with regard to the funeral home across the street and how that would interact with the curb cut. And I think that had been discussed. There's also been some site distance information provided to DPW. So that was certainly raised uh, as part of the DPW review, at least in, um, in concert with our discussions. With them. Um, so I think you know, just pretty standard stuff. Uh, traffic is up to the question. Um, the good news is, as I had mentioned, sir, um, the, these houses are down gradient of the um, Allendale Circle. So they should little or no concern related to any sort of water issues. Um, it would really just be related, I guess, to traffic and, and visual impact. Yeah, Leo, just so you know, I've, I've had a number of conversations with Walter Gould. Um, Frank Fitzgerald has met with him a couple of times and I believe they're meeting with them again next week um, because the, you know, the plans have kind of evolved. So I think they're having one final meeting with them, but as Rob indicated, I think they, they did have some current concerns about traffic and drainage, um, but um, uh, but the developer has has uh, met with them a number of times. Okay. Just wanted to make sure there was some communication going on. Thank you. Thank you, Leo. Anyone else? Yeah, I have a couple. Uh, I first a question, Rob. I haven't seen the drainage report. I know that there's a couple other guys in our office that you've probably been working with, but what what size storm can uh, these detention basins completely handle? Um, so this, uh, thanks, uh, Leo. Um, this this uh, has to meet all the EP stormwater management standards that came out in 2008. So I believe that's up to and including the 100 year storm, which would be, I believe six and a half inches of rain in the 24 hour period. Um, I know there's been some discussion amongst um, you know, the powers that be that create these, um, these models that, you know, they're talking about increasing the storm event size um, for the 100 year storm. Uh, that hasn't happened yet, but I do think it's coming down the pike. So we went with the current standards. Um, so I think, um, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, it, this has been designed to meet the 10 DEP standards um, and would would uh, accommodate up to and including the 100 year storm event. Um, I can check for you though, uh, because Philippe Cravo in our office had done the work. So I can check to see if for some reason um, there was any other specific requirements that Mr. Carr had. Um, and then as far as the drainage infrastructure in the street, I can just double check what the conveyance system is designed to. So, um, but that's my understanding. All right, thank you. And um, my second is, is more of a comment. And I know Phil has hinted he, he kind of wants to wait to the next meeting, but um, you know, he mentioned sidewalks. I'm already assuming that the, the proponent's going to want to have or propose to have a, a sidewalk on one side of the subdivision. I'm 100% against that. Um, just, you know, we have subdivision requirements and standards for a reason. And, you know, I, well, you know, I held the same person who did a subdivision last time to that standard. And I'm going to continue to do that moving forward. Okay. Uh they, thank you uh, through the chair. Thank you. That's helpful for us to know. Um, so I can relay that to the proponent. Um, there was also, if it's okay with, with the chair, I'd also like, there's three waivers that we did request. One of them is a scale waiver. It seems very simple. And I think, you know, certainly Minio and others will understand that request. Um, as far as the, um, I'm sorry, Luca, Luca, <laughs> Mr. Minio. Um, and um, the other the other was the um, Cape Cod style bituminous berm uh, versus granite throughout the subdivision. So those are those are really the two big ones: is the granite and the um, and the sidewalks. Um, so can I ask: the Is the waiver looking to remove all the sidewalks and not have any, uh, or no, just on? I'm sorry, just one side now. 
One, one mm. on the west side. Okay. Yeah, just so just so aware, I you know I, I kind of had this same comment at the preliminary level when they were showing the, the sidewalk on one side. You know, I, I'm in agreement with with Mr. Minio that you know we take into consideration the size of the development, whether there's other sidewalks around, and uh, you know in a lot of areas in the city, you know it doesn't make a lot of sense when the sidewalks don't connect to any other sidewalks. But there is an existing sidewalk on Allen Street to the west. Uh, that this development can connect to, and it and this and to me, due to the size of this development, uh, I, I think it does make sense that sidewalks be installed around the entire development. So that that's going to be my recommendation to the board when we ultimately approve this. The the other two waivers, you know, the scale is obviously not an issue, and I and I defer to DPW on the Cape Cod berms, although I think that's been a been a waiver that's been allowed in past development. So, but but the sidewalks. Again, um, I, I think I, I think I'm going to be on Lucas' side on this. That that you know, sidewalk should be installed in this development. I, you know, I, I agree with you and Luca. Under what conditions? I'm, I know this has come up before. Under what conditions have they allowed it only on one side? Was it smaller developments or? Yeah, it, it's a lot of times it's been smaller developments. It's been developments where there are no kind of a sidewalks elsewhere. Um, okay, but there is throughout that area. Well, again, there is none to the east. So, you know, the, the sidewalk kind of ends just short of this development. So um, I was hoping that they connect to that sidewalk where the, where the cursor is now. There is a sidewalk that connects to Allen Street and brings you up to Parker Street into that commercial development. As you go to the other side of it, to the to the to the east of the development, there are no sidewalks. But there is a there is a sidewalk that does connect you to. Now, just given the scale of the number of uh, houses, I think sidewalks on both sides are more appropriate for people who don't have a car and are walking to a bus stop or walking to the plaza or whatever. And, yeah, and, it, and it does, it does, you know, the city is, has done a complete streets master plan, you know, and again, what, what the complete streets plan looks at is, is other modes of travel than just the car. So, um, you know, sidewalks play a big part of that, pass, bike lanes. So, you know, again, I, I think to, due to the size of this development, it would be my recommendation that that sidewalks be installed, but I'll, you know, again, we can have that discussion further. Okay. Are there any other questions? Um, there's, there would only be one suggestion, and I, I totally understand where the board is coming from regarding sidewalks. Um, just a thought, kind of thinking outside the box, you know, from a design standpoint. Um, there's a sidewalk that we show all in, along the entire western side. Um, there are houses that are proposed, obviously, on the eastern side here. Down towards the front, there's only a stormwater basin, a slope, and then the culvert. One of the thoughts would be maybe if there was a hybrid solution that made sense, and this is only if it makes sense to the board, obviously, but maybe what we would do is rather than put sidewalks here where there's no sidewalk on this side of Allen Street, maybe we would refocus our efforts so, you know, Maybe we do all the western side, all the way around where there's houses, and then maybe cross and then extend this in the city's right of way. But I think either way, it makes sense to have a connection, as Phil had mentioned, to the to the sidewalk to the west. It doesn't mean that doesn't make sense to have a gap there for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I that may make some sense because the one of the larger concerns I have is is. You know, that lot, and I, I, I forget what lot it is, 16. You know, the house is there, but the lot goes all the way to Allen Street. So the, the, the poor guy that owns the house would be responsible to shuffle that entire length of side. Oh, oh, you're talking this one. Yeah. Yes. So that needs to be clear. Uh, you know, I, I understand that. But the way that the way, you know, all those show the house way over here. The lot actually extends all the way to Allen Street. So there, there may be a way that that, you know, maybe maybe there's a crosswalk installed um, that, that does make sense that because it would be 
you know, a burden on that particular homeowner. But again, I, I, we can have that discussion. Uh, yeah, that, that would be great to, to talk about. Um, but just a thought. Thank you. All right. Do we need to continue this hearing, Phil? Yes. Okay. Take a motion to continue this hearing. Second. Second. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Voting to continue. Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Danielli? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Ms. Filippo. Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Ms. Quaid? Yes. And Ms. Mueller? Yes. Rob, if I could just ask you to stop. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, and this will be continued for the December 15th. Thank you. Okay, and finally, under public hearings new, uh, we have a site plan review. The address is South Site Alden, Alden Street et al. For, it's for the construction of a new educational health science building. The petitioner is Springfield College. Who will be speaking for this petition? Good evening, everyone. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Hi, um, so I'm Katie Pachter, and I, uh, I'm from the SLAM Collaborative. We also have with us here uh, Emily Sperini from SLAM, Mark Rhodes, um, and then on our civil design team, we've got from Boulder, um, Zach Richards and uh, Will, and I believe, Will Granberry, excuse me, and I believe Jennifer might be, yes, so Jennifer's here from Springfield, as well as uh, Bill Guerrero. Um, so thank you for your time tonight. Uh, we are excited to introduce this project to you all. Um, and I, I think we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, Will, are you going to pull up the presentation? <laughs> Super. All right. Can everybody see this okay? It looks on my screen, it looks a little bit large. I don't know. Can you guys all see it okay? Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, I just introduced basically the, the team that's here with you guys uh, this evening. And we're um, in the process of designing a new health science center on the campus of Springfield College. Let's go ahead forward to the next slide. Um, just to start you out with some of the site planning, we've been in contact with Phil. Phil, thank you for all your assistance and working through the process and uh, getting us organ organized and oriented in uh, the city of Springfield. But just to orient you here, um, the site, if, if you see, we've got um, the main campus for Springfield College here on the east side of Wilbraham Avenue. And then we're sort of um, buckled in by Alden Street to the north and Sheffield to the west. Um, and the site extends down all the way to Portsmouth Street. Um, currently, uh, and you'll see on this, on this slide, just to give you an idea of um, how things are working, we've got the, the vehicular circulation outlined in, in a yellow highlighted color. And you can see a lot of the pedestrian, more curvilinear pedestrian pathways to the east on campus and extending in through the existing parking lot here. Um, we also have a limiting factor that we've been just working, uh, working through with, with this um, jet fuel line, the Buckeye jet fuel line, which used to follow the old rail line that basically um, cuts right through the site, basically bisecting the site. So that has been a bit of a challenge. Uh, we've used you know, our best design skills to um, maximize the, the building that we can give to Springfield College and meet all of their programmatic needs, um, as well as stay in, in line with the regulations that are imposed by the um, jurisdiction of the jet, jet fuel line. So next slide. So this is just a site diagram to give you sort of a cartoony idea of how things are organized. 
um, big picture, we've got a vehicular approach to the north on Alden Street, which is um, sort of a gateway, if you will, to the college as, as we are on the fringe of the main college campus here. Um, we also are looking to remove the um, parking lots in this area to the east, on the east part of the site, just east of the Buckeye fuel line and um, enhance that with an extended campus green. Um, the building itself is nestled in against Sheffield Ave and the sidewalk on that side between that sidewalk and the jet fuel line limits. We've got a 50 foot easement um, around that fuel line. It doesn't fall straight in the center of, of that easement, the jet fuel line itself. So there are some jogs, but the, the easement stays consistent. Um, and then we wanted to really enhance the pedestrian circulation and bring this connection through um, to, to the main campus in, in a more smooth and um, comprehensive way. So we've sort of created this pedestrian spine um, between the existing facilities building and then where we plan to um, erect the new health science center. And then along with this, um, really trying to bring some activity into that main public entry off the extended campus green with a plaza, looking to enhance with some um, site elements and really bring the program out uh, outside, and relating to the building, of course, but, but offering some outdoor teaching opportunities, outdoor gathering opportunities, and, and so forth. Um, we do plan to renovate the accessible parking in that lower right-hand area just to allow for enough parking for um, the facilities building. But as you may be aware, um, to the west, there is a, a project planned to um, replace the parking that we are removing on this site. And that will happen over where you see there's a, a label for transformer and generator. That whole area will come to you um, as a separate um, submission. But just so you're aware that, that the parking will be accounted for on a campus master plan level. Um, next slide. So I would just like to talk to you a little bit about some of the uh, amenities and what you're gonna see on the site. Uh, we are working with this historical um, look of the campus and really trying to extend that over into this new area. Um, I know Mark's gonna talk a little bit more about the building in a few minutes, but um, as far as the site's concerned, we've really tried to bring in some, some interest um, with some paver areas. As you can see for the campus entry plaza, we're looking at some other amenities, um, possibly some um, planters and, and therapeutic elements that will serve the building and the building users itself. And then we're also really trying to maximize the area of, of green space um, on the site. We can't, we're limited on what we can plant within that easement area for the fuel line, but on the limits of those two edges, um, we're looking to sort of reforest, provide um, some more ornamental and, and legacy trees to really lend um, shade to the, to the campus green and um, screening where necessary. And I think, I guess I could just point out, um, they're all located here, but we do have three public entries, um, one at the north for Alden Street, one at the sort of the east side um, that really will, we're working to activate to really make this, this quad space a little more um, extended into that main campus traffic, pedestrian traffic. And then, then one just sort of a smaller, um, stairway to the over off of Sheffield. Um, service will be again off of Sheff Sheffield Street as well, which is indicated in sort of an orangey asterisk um, and has a direct entry to the building to um, serve all of those functional needs. Um, and I think Will and, and Zach are going to talk to you a little bit about the um, 
the drainage and the um, utility approach. But if you guys have any questions about um, the basics, I'm happy to uh, field those now. Okay, take it away, Will. All right, thank you very much, Katie. Um, so again, my name is uh, Will Granberry with Bowler. Uh, we're the civil engineers on the project. I um, just wanted to give you a brief overview of the utilities for the new building. Um, we will be uh, providing water services, um, new water services off of the existing main and Sheffield Street um, to serve the building, as well as making our um, sewer and drainage connections out to the combined sewer in Sheffield Street. Um, as far as the stormwater components, the overall site is reducing the impervious area, which is going to have an inherent benefit uh, for the stormwater uh, on the site area. Um, in addition to that, we're also proposing a um, infiltration system uh, that will be uh, fed with some runoff from the extended green area uh, via a series of area drains. Um, so that will go, you know, uh, above just the inherent uh, improvements from the reduction of impervious and, and uh, provide additional stormwater management and treatment. Um, and that will have um, an overflow out to the existing uh, combined main and, and Wilbraham Street. Um, you know, other uh, utility improvements that we are uh, working on through our private utilities, we'll have gas and electric service um, generally uh, off of Sheffield Street um, due to the existence of the jet fuel line easement um, and it, utilizing as much space as we can for the building, uh, we are locating our transformer and generator um, as a kind of carved out portion of this uh, adjacent parking lot. Um, and then uh, we are also working with the college on their uh, communications network and making sure that uh, we are connecting in to their main communications and uh, system and providing you know additional conduit and and all of that infrastructure as needed um, for this to be a cohesive extension of the campus um, and so that's it for the the brief overview on the um, utilities and uh, we are in the process of um, working with the DPW and water and sewer um, I know we've had some back and forth in emails um, regarding the, the timeline and, and we'll be uh, working with them, uh, providing you know, preliminary plans and working uh, with the board as well on any comments that might come out of this evening to make sure everyone's reviewing the final and up-to-date um, uh, utility and drainage information. Um, but we're definitely working closely with them and um, we'll continue to work with them throughout this whole process. Um, and with that, I think we will um, overview the building and I'll pass it over to, to Mark Rhodes. Good evening, I'm Mark Rhodes, a design principal of the SLAM. And uh, I'll go through kind of a brief overview of the building planning uh, and the elevations as they stand right now as we're working with the college and our, uh, construction manager, uh, finishing up our documentation. On the first floor, as Will mentioned, we've, this plan has turned clockwise 90 degrees from the site plan, just so you get your orientation. The Halton Street is to the right, Sheffield Street is along the top, and the campus, that new campus green, is to the bottom of the page. What we've been looking to do is create as much of a public spaces within the building on the first floor near those entries. We bias the larger student-focused spaces towards the campus green. Uh, we have a lot of uh, classroom spaces, 50-seat uh, classrooms that are combi subcombinable into larger classrooms. We have a pediatrics lab where children would be coming with parents into the facility for, for uh, part of the educational curriculum, mostly entering off of Alden Street. That entry is really dedicated to that function. Stair towers on the ends, uh, bathrooms that have been designed uh, as gender neutral facilities and the whole facility has been thought of with uh, diversity inclusion in terms of its design in keeping with the mission of the campus. As we go through the, the floors of the building, it really is very simple. Uh, there's a porch or a loggia on the first floor that cuts the building back, and I'll show you that in elevation in a moment. We have a lot of simulated hospital uh, suites here, so the students will learn in a simulated environment. 
which is the big green box that you're seeing right now. All of those spaces are uh, for students and simulated uh, standardized patients to work together. So they really simulate a, a true educational experience. And it's, it's a really important factor for this building. As we look towards the Sheffield Street side, you'll see a lot of the bigger spaces, the classroom spaces are on that side overlooking Sheffield Street. Going up to the third floor, faculty offices start to show up on this floor. Um, you'll see some even larger lab spaces, a uh, mat table lab and a high-low table lab. Uh, there are community coming into this uh, facility. Uh, the campus does have to do a lot of outreach uh, as part of the educational curriculum. So it's really a wonderful opportunity at this site location to bring people into the building uh, in a very elegant manner. We are showing a roof terrace, which is for the occupants of the building on the second on this floor at level three. This overlooks the corner of Alden Street, Sheffield Street. It really breaks the scale of the building down and brings the height down a little bit as you look at that, that corner. Going up to the fourth floor, uh, we have the Gross Anatomy Lab on this level, more classroom space, uh, mock apartment to teach folks uh, physical therapy that need it in terms of how to re-engage in a life skills again, uh, as well as more faculty offices along this floor and meeting spaces. Uh, roof penthouse, a lot of our equipment is uh, smaller pieces are enclosed in a mechanical penthouse and the larger rooftop air handlers are behind a roof screen. So that screen mechanical rooftop units, there are several units in there. That screen runs all the way around. So you wouldn't see it from the ground. In terms of elevations, uh, we're using materials. This is the quad side or that campus green side. We're using materials that are very sympathetic uh, to the existing campus, brick, uh, cast stone or precast concrete elements, some metal panel, uh, really keeping in with the, the character of the, the railroad buildings or the railroad easement along that way, and specifically Judd Hall across the street. Uh, really wonderful existing campus building. Four-story building, we're marking uh, belt lines at two stories, and again, breaking down the scale of the building so it doesn't read as a true full four-story mass. Uh, that porch piece on the end, this is the corner of Alden and Sheffield. This elevation, there's a stair tower on the end. Faculty offices are to the left. And that porch piece is where the railing is on a, that floor space right there, overlooking all, the corner of Alden and Sheffield. You can see the mechanical screen. It reads very black, but it won't read that, that dark. Uh, it's just the number of line work and pixelation that we have. Uh, but on when we look at the Sheffield Street, we're breaking the scale down. There's a metal panel, uh, the box hangs up in the air. There's a two-story read of brick at the base, again, breaking the scale of the building down towards the street as much as we can. Stair tower on the right side of that. This is the end that faces the existing campus facilities building. Stair tower on the left, uh, Sheffield Street would be on the left. The campus green would be on the right. There's a two-story glass uh, common space, student commons, as you walk into the building, and that really becomes a beacon on that campus green, and it really provides a lot of uh, oversight uh, for folks that are happen to be in the enjoying the campus green. So any comments or questions for, for any of us as we're continuing to develop? Yeah, I have a quick question um, for Will. Um, Will, who have you been coordinating with at the DPW? Because I did email you on November 10th asking for the plans to be submitted to the engineering division. I'm Luca Video with the engineering division DPW. Yeah, correct. So, uh, Luca, I have that email pending in my inbox. I'll, I'll be responding to you. I know there's been a lot of coordination uh, based on our initial um, meeting, I believe, with Andrew Krar. Uh, the direction was to wait until we got through planning board to submit. I think we just maybe got our lines crossed, but we'll, we'll be submitting to you guys concurrently here as well. Um, so I, I'll be responding to you this week. And the reason why that's so important is because obviously there's another substantial construction project um, across the street from where the facility is proposed to be located. Um, and it makes sense to review those at the same time, uh, just to make sure that, you know, a comment on one or the other doesn't reflect the way that designs can be brought together. Um, 
So if you could get those to us as, as soon as possible, because it's going to put the DPW in a tough position as Springfield College is looking to start their parking lot um, construction work in like the next two weeks. So without having your plan, um, you know, it's going to be tough to give uh, approval on, on the parking lot end of it. Um, the other question I have is, is there a layout sheet that you can bring up for the facility? The layout and materials plan? Do you guys have that? Okay, fine. Is that something you have available? I don't know if I have your layout and materials plan. Hold and the, up. the only reason I'm asking is because when we had we had a meeting with Langdon a couple of weeks ago, Anthony Gordon, and they're proposing some um, traffic calming measures at the intersection of Portsmouth Street and Sheffield Street, and those traffic calming measures were, they weren't set in stone. Who's in the background? That's coming here. I think everyone needs to mute who's not talking because there's a lot of background noise. So yeah, those. So do we have a definitive answer on what we're doing at that intersection? Is it a raised intersection? Is it a raised crosswalk? Luca, this is Jennifer from Springfield College. I can Hi, Jennifer. you know that. Um, oh, my video's off. We do not have that finalized yet. Um, the construction documents for this project are not one hundred percent. We're working okay. through. We just got through sixty percent at the end of November. Um, so as part of some of our value engineering and uh, considerations for the whole project, uh, after some conversations with Chris Ignoli, um, we still have to make a final decision on what those measures will actually be. Okay. And my last question, and I think, and I can't remember, and I'm just going off of a document that was given to me by Consigli, but I think it has something to do with this build, uh, this, this site that there's a portion of the sidewalk on Alden Street that I think is gonna be closed off. And there is a temporary mid-block crossing that's gonna be proposed to get the pedestrians from one side of the street to the other. Um, you know, I just, I would like just to, to consider maybe some sort of temporary enhancements there. Um, you know, we just did have a pedestrian fatality in the city a couple of weeks ago and, you know, mid block, unsignalized mid block crossings, uh, especially on our arterial street, like Alden Street, definitely pose a, a safety hazard for pedestrians. So just if there's anything you can do just beyond, you know, putting paint in the road, you know, approach signage, maybe some flashing beacons, anything of that nature, just to, you know, to ensure that the students are safe. I can have a conversation with Consiglia as well, because there may be a sequencing sequencing opportunity that we don't have to touch that sidewalk at that first phase, and maybe we can work around it so once the parking lot's done, they can do that last section of sidewalk. Okay, great. Thanks, John. You got it. Are there any other questions from the board? It, it's Rosemary. I'm looking at the plans because I, I mean, I know that area of the school quite a bit and everything is so tiny on the plans. Is there any way we can just get some basic size numbers, height, length, width that aren't quite so little? I don't know if anybody else is able to read these. I'm just trying to get an idea of the scope of the actual building. I mean, I see where there's some cutouts and there's glass and stuff. So, you don't, you don't, I don't feel like you're looking at this box, you know, but, or even something that would enlarge some of these with the, with the building. Ms. Mary, are you looking at um, building elevations or is there something on the site plan? I'm sure we can get you what you need okay um, i mean i'm looking at several several of the things which is what you just showed up and um but i'm just having and maybe i just need a good magnifying glass to see what some of these elevations and stuff is so i could try that you know but once they put it in a copy and they shrink everything down to fit all this this, this stuff is really tiny 
I can always try and send you some larger scale plans too. Rosa. Okay, thank you. And have you had conversations with the Upper Hill Neighborhood Council? Yes, hi, uh, this is uh, Bill Guerrero. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity. I, I'm, I'm new to the community. I'm the, uh, the new, relatively new Vice President for Finance and Administration here at Springfield College. And um, so I appreciate that question about um, certainly community neighborhoods. Um, our, uh, our Vice President for Community Relations and Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, uh, Calvin Hill, uh, he's going to arrange a meeting with, uh, with, the, with the two community neighborhoods. Um, I think it's the Old Hill and the Upper Hill. Uh, those two, uh, th those two um, uh, important groups. And so we're going to do that next week, and uh, you know, listen to any uh, responses or feedback that they have regarding uh, this this uh, project. Okay. Any other concerns? I'm, I'm wondering, sometimes we will get a uh, picture of what the building will look like in color with the um, landscaping around it. Is that possible? We can provide that for the next meeting. Okay, thank you. No, I, I sent the file. It's only All right, if there are no other concerns at this point, or questions, I really should say, excuse me, um, I will accept a motion to continue the hearing. I'll make Move a motion to continue the hearing. I'll second. Okay, Phil. Okay, vote, uh, voting to continue the hearing, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Ms. Filippo. Yes. Mr. Florian? Yes. Mr. Wade? Yes. And Ms. Choi? Yes. Okay, uh, this would be continued until December 15th. All right, we'll see you back again. Thank you all very much. Thank you for your time. Okay, Are there any a &Rs? Yeah, just quickly, I've got a couple here. Let me just bring them up real quick. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this. This is uh, this is on Worcester Street. I think this is a this is a piece of uh, I was going to say Monsanto, but it has been Monsanto for years. But um, this is just they're just this is one large part dating of, yourself, Bill. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, Solution, I think it is now. Uh, yeah, this is just one large parcel. Now they're they're proposing to to create a smaller parcel off of Worcester Street. Um, so it's it's basically like one lot into two. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 God bless uh, you. And the second one is uh, off of Coolidge Street. Uh, again, uh, this is this is an existing lot with the house on it. Uh, this, it, I believe, used to be part of Stanley Street. It's been discontinued, so they're combining the 50-foot right away with a piece, 25-foot uh, piece, just to the north, creating a 75-foot lot, uh, buildable lot, um, for this particular location. So again, it's just a reconfiguration of some lot lines into one. Buildable lot. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. So that's that's all I got. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you on the 15th. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good night. Thank everybody you. in favor of adjourning. Aye. 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 Okay. Aye.